call the National Assembly to order and the first item on our agenda this afternoon is questions to the First Minister and the first question is from Leanne Wood. Will the First Minister make a statement on promoting the Welsh language? Yes, our vision of a million Welsh speakers by 2050 demonstrates our ambition concerning the language and promoting and normalising our essential components of our draft strategy which is currently out of consultation. First Minister, I note that you declared support for the goal of doubling the number of Welsh speakers by 2050, but there was little substance behind that announcement. I wonder if you can inform us exactly how you intend to meet that commitment. What are your targets and timescales for making sure that we are making progress towards that goal? For example, by when can we expect to hit the milestone of seeing three quarters of a million Welsh speakers? I'd be grateful if you could give us a date for that, please. Well, I mean, bear in mind, of course, that the, uh, that the strategy is actually out to consultation at the moment, and that contains our proposals in terms of the way forward. Uh, one area, of course, which is hugely important is to make sure that the local education authorities have uh, proper Welsh in education strategic plans, and we have made it absolutely clear to them that we will reject any plan they produce, any of those authorities, that isn't sufficiently ambitious. Paul Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As you said in the past, First Minister, it's important that we do ensure that the Welsh language is a living language in our communities, and therefore it's extremely important that we encourage people to use the language in all parts of their lives, including using the Welsh language online, for example. Now, the Welsh Language Commission has made it clear in the summary to her five-yearly report back in the summer that there is potential for technology to facilitate communication through the medium of Welsh because English tends to be the medium used online now. So, under these circumstances, can you tell us how your government is going to promote the use of the Welsh language online over the next few weeks and months? Well, there are a number of things, of course. This is part of a strategy in terms of looking at ways and means of supporting and promoting the language in the digital sphere. It's also very important to change the behaviours of young people, and we have been funding certain Earth projects over the past few years so that they can develop apps and so on to ensure that children and young people do see the language as a digital language, and rather than thinking that English is the only language that they can use on social media. Rollins. Uh, given this commitment uh, to a million Welsh speakers by 2015 and a universal acknowledgement that bilingualism is best achieved by immersing children in the second language as early as possible, what arrangements have been made by the government to implement Welsh learning into preschool classrooms? Well, this has been uh, the uh, Welsh, in, uh, Welsh medium uh, education strategies that we expect the local authorities to uh, produce. Some are more advanced than others, but it is hugely important uh, that a proper pathway is identified by local authorities to enable uh, access to uh, Welsh as a language to be learnt or indeed to be taught through uh, is as available uh, as Wales as possible. Question die, Vicky. Question two, Vicky Howell. What are the Welsh Government's priorities for increasing the number of tourists who visit Wales? Well, our Tourism Strategy Partnership for Growth 2013-20 to 20 does set out our priorities for developing and promoting uh, Wales' tourism offer both at home and overseas. Today is World Tourism Day, as I'm sure you know, First Minister, and it's so important that we highlight what is on offer in all parts of our country to visitors. My own constituency, Cannon Valley, possesses world-famous attractions like the Penderyn Whiskey Distillery, and unique events like the North Scallon Road Races, which commemorates uh, the, the memory of Gitterneath Bran. So how does the Welsh Government ensure the wealth of similar opportunities throughout the South Wales Valleys are highlighted within its tourism strategy? And in addition, as the theme of World Tourism Day 2016 is Tourism for All, how is the Welsh Government engaging with partners to ensure attractions are accessible to all possible visitors? Well, the Visit Wales website does list a wide range of events being held throughout Wales, including many in the valleys. Uh, and the annual, of course, North Scallan Road Race in Mountain Ash is listed in Visit Wales' main annual tourism brochure. This is Wales 2016. She asked, of course, as well about uh, accessibility. The Visit Wales website does include a filter for the provision of disabled visitors to allow visitors to search for attractions. Uh, that cater for uh, those with disabilities, and that information is based on the details provided by the attractions 
themselves, and the exact facilities can be confirmed by visitors at the inquiry or booking stage. Um, first Minister for seven years, so every day you pass the dilapidated Cardiff Bay train station, you also pass the crumbling yet magnificent facade of the Corris building opposite the, the Wales Millennium Centre. Uh, do you not realise how embarrassing it is for Wales that those buildings are the first things that many tourists see when visiting Cardiff Bay. A Westminster government would never allow such eyesores literally within a stone's throw of the UK Parliament. So what are you going to do about these eyesores in Cardiff Bay? Well, I don't know what he did when he was Deputy Leader of Cardiff, because of course the, uh, the Council does have a responsibility, not for the railway station I accept, but certainly for Central Square, now being developed of course by a Labour-led Council in Cardiff. Uh, so the new bus station is being built and the city has a proper gateway. He raises an important point about the uh, about Central Railway Station. I've certainly met with Network Rail. They have plans uh, for the station. We've been urging them to develop those plans as quickly as possible, keeping the character of the station, of course, while at the same time modernising the facilities available. Russell George. Uh, First Minister, Visit Scotland spends over £50 million on promoting Scotland. Uh, in Wales, Visit Wales, uh, 8.3 million on Wales as a whole. But none of that spend is spent specifically on promoting Mid Wales as a specific destination to visit. We have the coastal path, we have beautiful market towns, overlooking scenery, fantastic scenery in Mid Wales. Um, can I ask, uh, First Minister, is it good enough that we do not promote Mid Wales as a specific destination? Well, he makes a strong case for the area that he, that he represents, which I, I appreciate. We do look, of course, to promote all areas of Wales, including areas that traditionally have not been seen uh, as areas that have traditionally attracted uh, tourists. I can say that expenditure by staying visitors in Wales in 2015 was, uh, uh, was over £2.3 billion, uh, well above the, uh, the target that we've set uh, in place. We know that tourism, of course, is a major employer in Wales, of course, as well. And we'll continue to look to increase the number of visitors both day and overnight uh, to all parts of Wales so that uh, those who uh, don't have the good fortune of living here can enjoy what we have to offer. Yeah. Hannah Blythin. First Minister, I we welcome the successful summer for tourism in Wales in terms of day visits <coughs> and also the recent Welsh Government investment in my constituency including improvements to Flint Castle and the exciting <coughs> Let's Skate initiative which is coming to Theatre Cluid later in the year. Can you give insurers assurances that this investment will be continue to be built on so we can continue to grow our crucial visitor economy in North Wales? Yes, of course. Uh, in response to the point I made earlier on, we want to encourage tourism to all parts of Wales, not just those areas that have traditionally been the areas that have attracted most uh, tourists. And we'll continue to look to uh, provide investment to improve those uh, facilities for visitors in the years to come. Michelle Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, many businesses in North Wales are dependent on tourism and have long been disadvantaged in North Wales, partly due to the failure to adequately advertise local attractions along the A55. It's an ongoing pro problem experienced by local attractions. Visitors get on the 55, stop at the destination, having no idea of the diverse activities available off the 55, but which aren't signposted. The opportunity to use the 55 as a main means of generating income for local businesses is being missed. Uh, could you explain to us, please, what you're going to do to address this problem? Well, of course, working with local authorities, we're able to investigate, for example, the provision of more brown signs. We see those going up uh, across Wales. It is right to say that we, need, uh, we, we are working on making sure we get more capture of the uh, visitors that are travelling along the A55 to Ireland, uh, many of whom uh, have said to me in the past, we, well, we've, we've travelled to Ireland that way, but not really stopped on the way. I can say, though, when it comes to uh, international uh, tourists, that uh, figures continue to uh, go up, and for them, of course, many of them will visit, uh, will visit Ireland and travel through North Wales in order to, uh, to get there. But working with the local authorities, uh, we believe that uh, we can continue to provide information to visitors, both digitally and in terms of the signposting. Questions now from the party leaders, and first of all this week, the leader of the Welsh Conservatives, Andrew Arty Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, very often at First Minister's questions you talk at length about what the UK government is doing. Uh, so for this question, I'd like to focus on maybe what you think would be the best outcome uh, from Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. Do you think that the best interests of the United Kingdom would be served by having Jeremy Corbyn as the next Prime Minister? Yes. 
Well, it's nice to see that you're going to be playing your part in the trilogy then of the demise of the Labour Party by having him as the Prime Minister, because the longest suicide note possible was written in 1983 for the Labour Party, and by having a Prime Minister who delivers for Wales, it's vital to have that person in number 10. You also went to the conference... ...of the Conservatives' questions, please, in silence, without any attempt by Ministers to help the First Minister. <laughs> he needs all the help he can get. <laughs> First Minister, you also went to the Labour Party conference in Liverpool and launched a strategy there, the Healthy Child Wales programme, something which we fully support on these benches, because when you look at the indices around child health, they are pretty appalling, to say the least, here in Wales. And actually, most major indices have not moved since 2007 here in Wales. Can you tell us how the government will take this strategy forward? And importantly, what budget lines you have agreed? What budget, well, I appreciate there was a statement issued yesterday, but there wasn't a lot in that statement, First Minister. So what budget lines are agreed to take this policy forward? And how many extra community nurses will be there by 2021? Because we know the number of community nurses are declining in Wales. Well, this will be examined, of course, when the uh, budget is, uh, is produced and uh, as part of the... Uh, uh, the promises we made to the people of Wales back in May, we intend to, to continue, in, in continue, we ensure to continue uh, the situation where uh, health inequalities close. What we've seen, of course, with the bedroom tax and with cuts in welfare benefits, that inequality has risen in Wales, and we will do what we can to combat that. I'm grateful to him to, for mentioning my own party's conference. Yeah. If he wishes, of course, to play a, a, a greater role in that, then he can apply to join, though I can't guarantee his application will be accepted. <laughs> First Minister, the Labour Party are doing all the favours they can for the Conservatives and other parties at the moment. Long, long may it continue. As I say, we're now into the trilogy stage we are, because we had the sequel in 2015 we did. But the other point that was raised last week by my colleague David Meldin, the other point that was raised by my colleague David Meldin on government policy, because we didn't get an answer to my second question from you, so clearly there's no budget line identified yet, or the development of a community nurse strategy to increase numbers, is on housing. And in the programme for government, you, to your credit, identified you wanted to bring 20,000 social housing units forward by 2021. But that didn't have any answers to what the current housing crisis faces of the new starts in the housing market, where we saw a 7% decline in new starts in Wales last year. So how is your government going to deliver on its social housing targets? And importantly, how is it going to generate more activity in the overall housing market so by 2021 we can be hitting the targets of 12,000 units a year rather than the 8,000 we're hitting at the moment? Well, he mentions the, the, uh, the budgetary issues. Again, they will be part of the budget when it's uh, published for all members uh, to see. We have our target of 20,000. Uh, the minister will be... Uh, explain to the Assembly how that target will be uh, achieved. We have achieved those targets in the past. We stand on our record. And uh, he talks of a trilogy. The second part of the trilogy, of course, was the uh, defeat and uh, backward peddling of the Conservative Party in the elections in May. Yeah. Leader of UKIP, Neil Hamilton. Um, in the uh, government's document, Taking Wales Forward, uh, uh, the, forward, the uh, section on health says, we're committed to helping improve health and well-being for all. But as the First Minister will know, there are lots of parts of Wales where that remains just an aspiration. And in Gwynedd in particular, the area around Blaenau Festiniog, the record is exactly the opposite. In the seven uh, well-being areas defined by Gwynedd County Council, uh, there is uh, a community hub hospital in every one apart from Blaenau Festiniog. And since 2013, we've seen the closure of the Memorial Hospital, loss of hospital beds, closure of the X-ray service, closure of minor, minor injuries unit, closure of teledermatology clinics and therapy services, two rural branch surgeries closed, and the, the GP practice in Blaenau Festiniog, which ought to have four full-time doctors, and it's only got one salaried doctor, and uh, a variety of locums. As far as Blaenau Festiniog is concerned, they haven't got a national health service, but a notional health service. What is he going to do about it? Well, first of all, we have been investing, as we were in Blaenau Festiniog, in brand new health centres across the whole of Wales. Simply keeping old buildings going for the sake of it is not how we see the future of the health service. It's hugely important that Blaenau and other communities have access the most up-to-date modern facilities possible and there are examples of that around Wales and that's precisely what we want to offer to the people of Blaenau. 
Well, each of the other six well-being areas has got a hospital which is open for 24 hours a day. The health centre in Brino will be open for only 10 hours a day. Uh, that is unacceptable. The aspiration is to meet the needs of the local population, ensure that services are provided as close to patients' homes as possible. To get to us, Buddy Gwyneth from Brino Festiniog is an 80-mile round trip journey. Uh, and for a lot of elderly people and people on low incomes, this means that the National Health Service is not actually free at the point of delivery to them because they have to pay together. Ministers, unfortunately, have declined to intervene in this case, both the current Cabinet Secretary and his predecessor, Mark Drakeford, uh, because they say that the uh, decision to close down local services was agreed locally. But that, of course, was Betsy Cadwallader that agreed to do that locally. When local people were asked by means of a community referendum, nearly 100% of people voted against those closures. So I'm asking the First Minister now, will he encourage his colleague, the Cabinet Secretary, to personally intervene in this case? Well, he seems to be making a case for the establishment of a District General Hospital in the area if he says that the travel is a problem. Yes, it is. We know the travel in some parts of Wales uh, means that people have to travel further than normal, but that's because they get a better service in a District General uh, Hospital. What we have, of course, is a Sputty Ashley which is about, I think, seven miles away from, uh, from Blaine Festiniog, and indeed the promise of investment into new health facilities uh, so that people don't have to go into hospital in the first place. For many, many years, we ran a health service in this country which was hospital-focused. Uh, we intend to make sure that more and more people can stay at home, get the support that they need at home without having to go into hospital. But the litany of closures that I just read out shows that uh, that's merely an aspiration, what the First Minister has just said. People in Blyne, I feel that they are actually being discriminated against amongst all the well-being areas which are identified by Gwynedd County Council. What is it that uh, Tawin has got, for example, that Blyne Festiniog uh, lacks in terms of the health needs of the people? I I'm asking the First Minister uh, just this simple question. Will he encourage the Cabinet Secretary to meet a delegation from Blyne Festiniog in order that we can argue the toss on the claims of this important area to better treatment as part of the government's overall objective stated in its high-flown document last week. It's absolutely essential that the area gets better treatment. That's why we're investing in health facilities. He needs to go and talk to people, for example, uh, in, on this side uh, where a new health facility, br brand new health facility was opened there, or people indeed in, uh, in Port Talbot, uh, in Baglin, in the Port Talbot Hospital, brand new health centre there, or Bilth Wells, brand new health centre there. We are providing the facilities that people need for the future, and importantly, the facilities that shape the future as far as the health service of the 21st century is concerned, ensuring that fewer and fewer people have to stay in hospital rather than doing things in the same old way where people stay in hospital when they don't need to. Of the opposition, Leanne Wood. Um, First Minister, how many children are waiting for more than four months for a first appointment? with child and adolescent mental health services? Well, with, with child and adolescent mental health service, we've invested heavily, 6.6 .6 million into the service. Demand outstripped supply, that much is true, which is why, of course, we match that with the extra investment that has been put in. It means, of course, that the, uh, the numbers waiting and the times that people are, uh, that youngsters are waiting have gone down. Um, well, First Minister, I asked you for a figure and um, the exact number that you were looking for is 1,174 children are waiting for four months. And it's not true to say that that <coughs> figure has gone down because that figure has almost trebled in the three years since 2013. Now, we all know that investment in early years are crucial for positive outcomes in education and health, and in particular, in preventing some of the problems that can arise later on in life. Developments in neuroscience are showing that the early teenage years can be just as crucial for a, a person's development as the early years. I visited my old school last Friday and I was told that the rates of self-harm are going through the roof at Tonopandi Community College and I don't think for one minute that that is an isolated case. Depression, anxiety and self-harm have become too common amongst a generation that have many worries about things like zero hour contracts, massive student debt and endless austerity. Those young people are not covered by the interventions that are available for children under seven years old. The things that can go wrong in the teenage years can cause problems for life, and I saw that only too well in my former role as a probation officer. First Minister, will you establish a programme for pre-teens and teenagers to go alongside your Healthy Child programme? And would you be prepared to look at what role mindfulness could play in such a programme? 
Well, first of all, mindfulness was mentioned in the, uh, in the Welsh Development Manifesto uh, as something that could be looked at. Uh, when we talk about the health of a child up to seven years old, that must include all types of health, including mental health as well. Uh, and that is something that will, be, will need to be, take, will be, take, will be taken into consideration when developing the programme. The, the, the second point is, is this. She's right. I mean, we do see instances where uh, young people uh, do find themselves an, uh, under a great deal of stress. Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is, is one area particularly which, which she and I didn't have to cope with, uh, which is something that, that is a, a real issue, and the education programme in schools to, to deal with that is, is important. The fact that there are counsellors in the secondary schools, that's important in order to, uh, to help young people. And, of course, ultimately making sure the resources are there for, for CAMS. The resources have been put in. I fully expect the uh, waiting times and the numbers to go down as those resources work through the system. First Minister, your government's record in helping young people with poor mental health is appalling. And that's without mentioning the children and young people that don't even make it into the system. The mortality rate for teenagers between 15 and 19 years old is higher in Wales than it is in England. And there has been no reduction in deaths from intentional injury from that age group between 10 and 18 years old in three decades. A national case audit of children's deaths has suggested that many young people who died from suicide had not had any contact at all with mental health services. And for those who had, there were problems with services failing to follow up on patients <coughs> who did not turn up for their first appointments. You once admitted, First Minister, that your government took its eye off the ball when it came to education. Will you now accept that your government has taken its eye off the ball on children and young people's mental health? Will you now accept that this is a crisis? And will you tell us what, after 17 years of leading the government here in Wales, you intend to do about this? Well, I have to say to the Leader of the Opposition, I had experience, as did my constituents, of this. Uh, when the town that I represent was branded as some kind of suicide capital where we had predatory journalists arriving from London who were, who were trying to uh, question young people outside the local college and trying to suggest to them that it was better to be dead than to live in the area. Those are the words, exact words that we used. Those youngsters who took their lives in the main did not know each other, despite what the, uh, the, the press suggested. And to come to the point that she was making, uh, many of them had no contact with, um, uh, with mental health services. Um, they were a surprise. The, the, what happened was a surprise to their families. They'd had no warning. And in some ways, that's the, greatest, that's the greatest tragedy of all because people, it's an important point, this is the greatest tragedy of all where you have young people who are not uh, known to the system and have not identified themselves to the system. She asked what's being done. I've already mentioned the money that's been put into to CAMS. It is true to say uh, that demand for CAMS uh, was significant and that's why of course we provided more resources for CAMS in order to make sure that more young people are identified and on top of that of course we do have counselling services in the secondary schools in order that young people can go and talk to people early on and that takes us well beyond what used to be the case in Wales. Question three here Question three, here we're Anka Davis. What assessment has the First Minister made of the role of allied health and social care professionals in delivering Welsh Government priorities of promoting health and well-being throughout life? Well, well, I'm grateful to the member for this question because they are the unsung heroes of the health service in many ways. They, they work in the community and in primary care and, of course, they deliver a lot of preventative care, which is difficult to measure in itself because how do you measure something that prevents something that, uh, that, 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 uh, may, that would have happened in the, uh, in, in the future. And of course they help to, to deal with the admission avoidance so that more people don't have to go into hospital but have the support to stay at home. Thank you, Mr. Sir, I better declare an interest as my wife is in the register of interest is a radiographer. She also has very cold hands so I warn people in advance. Uh, in Wales 50% of uh, people she does. 50% uh, of, uh, uh, of the population of Wales will be over 65 by 2037. There is now a higher proportion of people aged 85 plus as we speak. The increase in chronic conditions and comorbidity resulting in complex health needs is documented and is there for all to see. This will require a real determination to deliver the Welsh Government strategy and to align that workforce towards primary care, are picking them up where we can actually keep people in a well-being service, not a rescue and an illness service. So would he congratulate my wife and all those who work in allied health and social care professions 
and congratulate also Dave Rees for hosting an event last week at which all of those professions were there. They deserve our thanks and our gratitude. They have a huge role to play. Yeah. Can I, th I, I will join, of course, in, the, in congratulating the member for, for Aberavon. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, harmony will reign in his household this evening, after what was revealed to us in terms of the information. But he's right. The challenge that faces us in the future is, as people get older, yes, you know, many of those people will be fitter when they're older, but inevitably people get a, a, a number of small conditions that taken together make it difficult for them to live their lives in the way that they would want. Uh, it's rare for somebody to have, a, have one very serious condition that, that disables them. Quite often, it's, it's just a combination of, of different things. So what then can the AHPs do? Well, early recognition of problems and timely intervention so that things are dealt with early on. Admission, prevention, facilitated discharge, rehab and reablement, very important, obviously. Support for chronic conditions as well, so that people uh, with chronic conditions don't have to continually go back to hospital in order to, to deal with a particular flare of a, of a chronic uh, condition. And, of course, the what they do in terms of being able to add to a multi-agency, a multidisciplinary team to help uh, the individual. And we know that, that in the future there will be more pressure as people live longer, something to be welcomed, but also there is still a frailty of the human body that we can't, uh, that we can't legislate for. And more and more people as they get older will need help with what may be a, a number of, of smaller conditions, but nevertheless are significant for them as an, as an individual. Trina Piorwerth. Uh... Thank you, Llywydd. Over the past few weeks, I visited two pharmacies in my constituency, the Rowlands Pharmacy in Llanfair and the Boots Branch in Llangevny. Now, pharmacies, of course, play a crucial role in the wider provision of primary care, and I would certainly want to see that provision extended. Does the First Minister agree with me that we need to do away with some of the barriers that prevent pharmacies from playing their full role including actually putting aside the ban on advertising some of their services, for example, flu jabs and services in terms of smoking prevention and so on? Well, yes, that's right. And, of course, that will be part of the public health bill. And it's important that any nonsensical obstacles are done away with. But we know, of course, that pharmacies play a vitally important role in ensuring that people receive advice without having to go to see their GPs. And, of course, we would wish to extend the services available from pharmacies, ultimately, bearing in mind, of course, that more and more of these pharmacies, uh, the pharmacists have received clinical training so that they can actually work in that area. Uh, First Minister, I also share the admiration uh, mentioned here for jobs that our health and social care professionals undertake throughout the country. The multidisciplinary approach uh, provided to patients by doctors working closely with such professionals has proven to be very effective, particularly in the health boards, where they have a director of therapy and health sciences on their boards. And uh, you can see that by the examples of some of the ones that are recognised good examples uh, throughout Wales. So, First Minister, what could you do to embed this role, given the uh, ever-changing nature of healthcare provision? And will you review or undertake to discuss with your colleagues the review of the CPT training for these people so that we can better identify and prepare for the next generation of directors of uh, therapies and health sciences? Yes, I mean, first of all, we would expect local health boards to uh, see what works in other health boards and then use that best practice and apply that best practice in their own uh, areas. And where there's evidence of that practice working well, then clearly we, we would want them to to look at it to see if it's appropriate in their own area and if so to to implement that when it comes to uh, to cpd many professions of course are governed by uh, professional bodies that are of themselves not not devolved if i can put it that way and govern and have their own uh, requirements for uh, cpd but if that is a, an issue then it's something of course that the minister might be able to look at uh, in order to uh, to see how the uh, the position of uh, the directors that you've uh, that you've uh, referred to can be strengthened in the future Question Pedwar Susie Question for Susie David. So if, uh, will the First Minister set out the next stage of the Welsh Government's Small Business Rates Relief Scheme? Yes, we're extending the temporary relief scheme, which was due to end in March next year for a further year, and then we'll be developing a new permanent scheme, which will be in place from April 2018. 
Uh, thank you for that answer, First Minister. The Welsh Government's decision to stick with its existing business scheme uh, hasn't received the reception you might have liked in your own constituency, First Minister. Uh, trades are already vocal in the criticism of the highest business rates uh, in my region and perverse rates incentives to keep shops empty. And Bridgend Town in particular, uh, they're not very happy with the council that did its best to uh, ignore the views of traders on how to increase footfall. Some now feel misled into believing that the labour rate relief scheme would be different from business as usual. So what reasons can you give us for making the current system permanent instead of adopting much conservative policies around differentiated multiplier and, uh, and uh, tapering relief to 15,000? Well, I have to say that, first of all, with regard to my own town, which I know very well, there are at least three different groups of traders uh, who don't agree with each other. Uh, and uh, that is one of the weaknesses uh, that uh, one of the weaknesses the town faces. And secondly, she mentions empty premises. The biggest problem with empty premises in Bridgend is the intransigence of landlords. Uh, landlords who will not rent or, or only offering rent at ridiculous rates. Uh, I have heard examples of businesses who said to me that they are only being offered leases of 10 years with rents of up to 25,000 a year. That's ridiculous. Some of the landlords in Virginia get real and understand that uh, the way of things 40 years ago is no longer right. She asked me what, 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 why we should not adopt this Conservative policy. Well, of course, simply this. Over 70,000 businesses in Wales, more than 70% of them receive support. Over half of all eligible businesses pay no rates at all. In England, in England, only a third pay no rates at all. So actually, the scheme in Wales is significantly more generous than the penny-pinching scheme implemented by the Conservatives in England. Caroline Jones. Dear uh, First Minister, <coughs> uh, I've been contacted by a number of constituents who have expressed concern over the level of their business rates, which is putting a strain on their business finances. As they fall outside the threshold for small business rate relief, they have to pay the full business rates, irrespective of the affordability. Unless these small business owners find smaller, cheaper premises, then these uh, properties, they are stuck with huge rates bills. What plan does your government have uh, to raise the rate relief threshold and ensure that rate relief has an affordability consideration? Well, we, are, we already put £98 million into the rate relief scheme. Um, w there is bound to be a threshold, unfortunately, for those who are, the, as they would see it, the wrong end of the threshold. Yes, they will have to pay uh, business rate relief. What we cannot do is introduce a, a system where everybody gets business rate relief and nobody pays business rates. And like any business, business have to take decisions as to the size of their premises uh, in, in order to understand what is affordable for them as a business. Question Pimp Di Question 5, Di Lloyd. Thank you, Llywydd. What support is the Welsh Government providing to Abertawe Bromorgano University Health Board following decision to escalate its status to targeted intervention? Well, we are working closely with the Abertawe Bro Morgano University Health Board and support will be directed by the Welsh Government in agreement with the Health Board on what assistance it requires. Thank you for that response, First Minister. Further to that, may I ask, are you confident that you have the capacity within your departments in the Assembly to provide the necessary support to this health board in Swansea, given that other health boards are also under special measures? Well, only one health board is under special measures, namely Betsy Cadwallada. We are most confident in uh, about the way in which Betsy Cadwallada seems to be turning itself round. And so the targeted status of the other um, boards will avoid any situation to ensure that they don't go in the same direction as Betsy Cadwallada. I declare interest in my wife's videographer in ABMU, but I won't discuss her warmth or the coldness of her hands. <laughs> First Minister, ABMU is under targeted intervention because of cancer services and uh, unscheduled care. Both parts of those rely upon diagnostic services. Now, we have seen problems in diagnostic services in the past with waiting lists being perhaps of a length unacceptable to everybody. But will you join me in congratulating ABMU and the staff in particular who have actually seen those waiting lists come down and therefore we've seen diagnostics getting better in ABMU? Yes, I will. At the end of July, uh, there was a reduction of 78% in the number of people waiting over eight weeks for one of the uh, specified di diagnostic tests compared to July 2015. Susie Davis. With. Um, First Minister, the Health Board's Integrated Performance Report of July 2014 states, and I quote, that the Health Board continues to experience significant challenges in the delivery of urgent suspected 
cancer uh, referral target in particular. Uh, at that time, they were reaching 86% 80, of the target rather than the 95% that uh, the government was looking for. And notwithstanding the, the point made by David Rees now, uh, being that those issues were reported two years ago, what support did you give ABMU at that time? What is different about the support you're giving them now? And if it was needed two years ago, why wasn't it given then? Uh, well, if you look at the, uh, the figures, we look at the 62-day performance for, uh, for uh, cancer. Uh, more people uh, are, are starting their treatment within the target time of, uh, for 62 day, the 62-day pathway of cancer. The same thing applies for uh, the 31-day pathway, 80.4% higher. If we look at 12 hour weights in A&E, last year the, um, those figures had reduced by 63% uh, since March of uh, this year. So we are seeing uh, great differences in terms, not just of diagnostics, but in terms of cancer treatment and indeed in terms of A&E performance. Caroline Jones. Diolch Lewis. Uh, First Minister, uh, the reason ABMU are to receive targeted intervention is due to poor performance in unscheduled cancer care. The most recent figures show that just 83% of patients diagnosed the, via the urgent suspected cancer route start treatment within 62 days. Uh, we all know that timely, uh, timely treatment and intervention reduces the risk that the cancer will spread and increases the chances of survival. What support is the Welsh Government giving to ABMU to enable them to eliminate delays in treatment and to improve the cancer survival rates in my region? Well, I think I've already answered that question when I gave the, um, the, the statistics in terms of the 62-day performance and the 31-day uh, performance. Uh, it, sometimes, of course, clinicians um, tell me that it's not, it's not that easy to start treatment within 62 days because of the, the nature of the cancer itself, uh, its position in the body, uh, and indeed the, the need to look very carefully at, at, at having the most targeted treatment for the, the individual. If you're an individual with cancer, of course, well, yes, you need to have certainty as quickly as possible. I understand that. It's a very human need. And that's why, of course, we're seeing the improvements in the, uh, in the performance of ABMU in that field. Question Question six, Caroline Jones. Uh, uh, will the First Minister outline the Welsh Government, uh, how the Welsh Government is helping the NHS prepare for the forthcoming winter? Well, we'll continue to support health and social care organisations in Wales through our quarterly national seasonal planning meetings, which support their seasonal planning arrangements. And, of course, as part of that, uh, preparedness for the forthcoming winter period uh, is paramount. Thank you, First Minister. Um, last winter, we saw unprecedented levels of demand on unscheduled care. People struggling to access, uh, access to a GP over the winter months put an enormous strain on our A&E departments as patients go there to seek uh, med medical treatment. According to the RCN, our hospitals are so full all year round that the system cannot cope with a seasonal spike in demand. We have to address the GP access issue if we are to avoid the scenes we saw last win winter with ambulances stacked up outside hospitals. What plans does the Welsh Government have to improve the out-of-hours GP service and make greater use of community pharmacies in treating minor ailments this winter? And will you be running a publicity campaign highlighting the role of pharmacies in treating minor ailments? Well, we do. I mean, the Choose Well campaign has been doing that for, for many years, and indeed there's an app available for people who want to access it. And we encourage people to look uh, in the first place at, uh, at a pharmacist, then to look at a community nurse, and then to think about the, uh, the GP. And it's quite right to, uh, to, to, to say to people, don't default to the A&E department first, or indeed to a GP first. Uh, so that, that, that's already in, in, in train. In terms of out of hours, it's available in our, in our DGHs and, and elsewhere. The issue in the winter is not the numbers of people coming through A&E, it's, it's the condition that they have. Uh, many more older people with respiratory conditions that are more complex, they need more time in A&E and ultimately uh, admission. Now, last year, uh, the preparedness plans worked well. It can be difficult, of course, to predict um, the demand on the NHS in the winter because of the weather basically, but nevertheless, we scrutinise the preparedness uh, of each local health board to make sure that we can be satisfied that they are ready for the winter. Simon Thomas. Uh, with. Thank you, Llywydd. Well, under the Children's Health Plan that you published, First Minister, every child under seven is supposed to be given the same consistency of service in winter or summer. So how do you respond to the Royal College of Paediatrics report today on 
babies born prematurely who, that show that they are given a secondary and second rate service here in Wales. Only 31%, for example, of premature babies are given a crucial second appointment by their second birthday. And that is half the percentage across the rest of the UK. And having centralised the service for um, premature babies, the closure of the unit in Withybush and moving it to Glanguilly, they are still given a second-rate service as compared to the best services throughout the UK. Is it empty rec- rhetoric, therefore, when you are unable to provide what is crucially important and fundamental today? No, not at all, bearing in mind that, according to the report itself, that approximately 90% of the services are working well. There are some parts of the service that need improvement, and that's why we welcome such reports so that we can identify where there is room for improvement but we know according to the Nuffield report that there is very little difference between the health services across the United Kingdom and we will continue to ensure that the best services are available where particularly where things are good but could be better. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, winter pressures haunt us uh, every year. We have these kind of conversations, always the same groups of people, the elderly, the young, the chronically ill. However, in Pembrokeshire, um, the community resource teams, which are a joint collaboration between the Health Board and local government, have been incredibly effective in working together to ensure that people have access to the right services and in preventing hospital admissions. They focus on preventative care, uh, they reduce the need for complex care packages, and they're basically their job is out there to avert crises. They work in the community in tandem with doctors. Um, and there's no coincidence, First Minister, that this is a health board that actually has a director of, uh, social th- of, of therapies and social sciences, a former occupational therapist. They're stopping people getting into hospitals, particularly the elderly, particularly those with respiratory problems. First Minister, would you first of all welcome the work they're doing, because they're one of the leading practitioners of this in Wales, they and um, Neath Port Talbot. And secondly, would you come to Pembrokeshire to first of all see them in action and also to understand a little bit more about the benefits that a director of um, therapies and social services, allied healthcare professionals, can bring to the changing face (coughs) of NHS healthcare, uh, particularly over these next 10, 15 years, when we need more of these people, not less? How can I refuse such an offer? Uh, in principle, I'd like to accept that because uh, I'm interested in the, uh, in the work that um, the member has, uh, has described. Uh, I can see the passion that she displays in advocating the work that, that, uh, that she has seen them do. I'd like to see it for myself. Tanuid, question seven. Question seven was withdrawn by the member, so question eight, Clear Griffith. Thank you, Llywydd. Will the First Minister make a statement on the shortage of doctors in North Wales? Well, as regards the numbers, there isn't a shortage. There are more doctors now than we had in 2005. Well, no, I'll give you the figures. In 2005, there were 1,849 GPs in Wales, and now there's 1,997 in the Betsy Cadwallader area, 437 in 2005, and 422 in the previous year. And the same is true of doctors in hospitals. Having said that, there will be a campaign launched at the end of next month in order to attract more doctors to work in Wales. Well, I'm not sure if I want to thank you for that response because there's a very different picture painted if you count the number of doctors that correspond to full-time equivalents. But the question I wanted to ask you is one of the problems with the recruitment of GPs in rural areas is lack of wider facilities, health facilities available to them. GPs don't want to fail in their duties because they can't access beds for their patients, x-ray machines, diagnostic services and so on and so forth. Can I ask you, therefore, would you be willing to commission research with rural GPs, including those perhaps who have given up their post, to acknowledge their problems in terms of access to local facilities and to take action as a result of that? I would argue that we're already doing that through the collaborative offices in Mid Wales that are working extremely well and I would expect that that work that has been done there can be transferred and uh, disseminated throughout the whole of Wales. It's already started.
First Minister, for that question, I, I listened very carefully. One thing you didn't refer to, of course, is the innovation in GP care, in particular in North Wales, in terms of the work that's going on in Prestatyn with a multidisciplinary team approach uh, to patient care. What work is the Welsh Government going to do to evaluate whether that model is a successful model which can be applied elsewhere across Wales in order to alleviate the pressure on GP numbers uh, in the country? Well, well, he will know. He's seen it himself uh, as to how it, how it works. The, the, the reality is that we saw in Prostatin GP practices, two of them, if I remember rightly, close, but the local health board took over uh, the provision of primary care services, and the services are better, and they're certainly wider than what was available before. So it does show that, 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 the, the old, that the contractor model is not always the best model for delivering medical services. For some, that's what they want. For more GPs, increasingly, it seems to me, the contractor model is less attractive to them. What we've seen so far in Prostatin has been uh, excellent in terms of the, uh, the width and the depth of the service that's been uh, provided. And of course, the local health board will continue to evaluate uh, what's been done there in order to make sure that it's uh, a model that can be adopted potentially around Wales. Question now, Mohammed. Question 9, Mohammed Ash. Signing officer, what plan does the Welsh Government have to improve mental health services during the Fifth Assembly, please? Yes, we've made a number of commitments around mental health and well-being in the programme for government, and we will shortly be publishing the next three-year plan to deliver our mental health strategy together for mental health. Thank you for the reply, Minister First Minister. In 2014, the Children, Young People and Education Committee published an inquiry into child and adolescent mental health services. The committee found that there was 100% increase in referrals for these services, but the provision was insufficient to meet this increase. In recent meeting with the committee, the chairman, the Children Commissioner for Wales, said that the Together for Children and Young People group, dedicated to performing mental health services for children and young people, has only met once since the group inception. Even though the Welsh Government increased £7 million into the services, there is no explicit commitment in the programme for government to re reforming CAM, throwing money at a problem, won't make it disappear. Will the First Minister commit to the reforming these services and explain how he will do it? I, I disagree with the member. Uh, it, it, did, it did need an injection of money. That's happened. We, we are seeing the benefits. Fewer children are being cared for in the area. The waiting times for specialist uh, CAM services are down by 21%. And of course, new services for ADHD and autism are being established uh, across Wales. There's more to do, of course, but we are seeing uh, real improvements for children with mental health problems. I can all question. And finally, question 10, Jenny Rathbone. Um, and what are the implications for the Welsh economy as a result of Japan's statement on the potential loss of tariff-free trade with the UK due to Brexit? Well, the Japanese government statement covers a number of potential adverse economic implications of the UK's exit. Uh, it's for the reasons that are outlined by that government that we want businesses in Wales to have full and unfettered access to the single market. Um, I'm sure we all do, but unfortunately many members of the UK government seem to be um, progressing, pushing in the opposite direction, uh, which is extremely worrying for there's some 6,000 people who depend on jobs which have resulted out of Japanese investment, including Panasonic in my own constituency up in Pentoin. So I just wondered how we are going to be able to influence the UK government to ensure that we will continue to have um, a free trade with the European Union, because otherwise the, the, the future for inward investment looks extremely bleak. Well, well to me, Agreeing that fundamental point is essential before we can move on to anything else. That is the basis, the, the building block on which the, any, any deal can be built. Unless we get progress on that, it's very difficult to see progress on anything else. Uh, I'm certainly concerned that, that the UK is now seen as uh, not wanting to engage uh, with the EU. There are issues I met with the Chief Minister of Gibraltar. Uh, two days ago. The worry that Gibraltar has is that Spain will veto any deal of any kind with the UK unless the issue of Gibraltar is resolved to Spain's satisfaction. Uh, it's an opportunity that Spain has that wasn't there before, which uh, Brexit has, has delivered. So there are many, many factors still at play here, some of which will not yet have been identified. I thank the First Minister the next time.